Hey, welcome to the Great American Shootout podcast featuring Blue and Mass. Whether it be tournament recaps, rankings, or in-season analysis, we are your source for all things Texas high school basketball. Before we get into our show, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Ever wondered how to make a significant improvement in your game? Gasso Player Analytic Breakdown equips you with the knowledge you need to take your game to the next level. With Gasso Player Analytic Breakdown, you will receive write-ups, feedback, shot charts, heat maps, and even film to harness your full potential. To learn more, go to greatamericanshootout.com. Again, that's greatamericanshootout.com. Hey, welcome into the Great American Shootout podcast. I am your host, Ryan Massad, joined today by Sam Lowe and Blue Zertucci. Today, we are going to talk about how rankings are built, the 2020 classes, risers, and the top 10 for the 2020 class. Fellas, how are we doing today? Good. Ready to go. I'm good. All right. Let's do it. So, Sam, I'm going to ask you, how, how do you guys approach the rankings? What, what does this look like? What's the process? Um, our, first, our first thing is just the eyeball test, sitting and watching games. We, we try to be present as much as possible between Great American Shootout, 7, 10, 12 events a year, games going all day. We're, we're taking in games constantly at Great American Shootouts. And then we, we focus a lot on the high school season as well. When we're out of our busy time as far as the business side of it, we're out at high school games and uh, really like to see how the kid goes from a summer team where it's in one environment to a high school setting where a lot of times that top kid then becomes the best player on the team. How does he handle that? How does he uh, handle being the go-to guy and all those responsibilities? Um, so it's really just looking at the players as much as possible. Typically by Christmas in the high school season, I've seen 100 high school games. And then you get district and the playoffs, the state tournament. We funnel right from that into the Great American Shootout season. So year-round, maybe all in a, a month or two, 10 months of the year, we're seeing games and seeing games in person. We will watch some videos and build off that, but it's mainly in the gym, watching kids. And... A lot of the communication also comes from, or some of the communication comes from the high school coach themselves, uh, and sometimes even the college coach might give us a little tip on somebody that they needed, they might have saw, you know, along the way. So that we just start collecting all of that information, get out to games, especially during the season. Once we kind of hit uh, uh, district play, you hear things about players uh, playing well, and also the high school coach will say, "Hey." Um, my guy's averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds. And then, you know, that's a perfect time during district is to kind of, is to go out and really start hitting some of those, uh, those teams that normally, uh, uh, you know, you might not see just on a typical weekend. Well, awesome. So that, that kind of moves obviously into the next point. You see a lot of games. Now, what are you looking for specifically into the, pl- in the player? Uh, we, we break it down. I mean, First thing that's always going to stand out is athleticism. A, a player's athleticism, what does he do that's, that's special? Uh, shot making. In today's game, with the three-point shot being as prevalent as it is, shot making is huge. Skill level, skill level for your position. You know, uh, are you, Can you do what your body size determines you should do? Uh, it's it's hard to be a 6'3 postman in the college game. So if you're 6'3, can you do what a 6'3 player is going to need to do at the college level? So that stuff goes into it. And then as we're ranking them and putting numbers on kids, 1, 2, 3, through 100 or 150, um, it, it's a mix of performance at Great American Shootouts, performance at on the high school team and with your high school team. It's also a little bit of projection on how good a high school player you will be. Some guy that might score 25 points a game because he's got a great high school game might not be the college player than another guy that might score 12 points a game because of something to do with the physical size or athleticism of the game needed for the college game. So how you project as a college player, some services will put in how you project as a pro. I don't think we factor that as much in. We're looking at... College coaches, when they talk to us, they want to know they're trying to win games, and they want to know what player can help me win games. So a big factor is who, who do we think can go step into a college scene and help that coach win 25, 30 games? Because that's what they're trying to do is win games. 
And I think that's important to understand is that stats don't always tell the story. Because when you're watching in person, when you're sitting there watching the flow of the game, there might be, like Sam said, somebody averaging 25 points a game. But where does that translate to the next level of college? Because you could be sitting there watching somebody that is scoring 12 points and they're 6'3", but they're a freak athlete. They're getting their elbows above the rim, and they're just going to be naturally a better prospect overall than maybe that guy that's getting more opportunity scoring 25 points a game. Sure. sure. Um, well, that, that kind of moves us into our next point, um, the rankings itself. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, I want to hit on some movers and risers in this 2020 class. The rankings come out about four times a year, um, roughly, and they're they're not always super different. Um, but they there are always guys who are trending one way or going another way. And you know, with that being said, Blue, who are some guys who who in this last quarter have have stood out, have have risen in the rankings, and and who you know, quite honestly, are are, are making a push. Um, on these last rankings? The final rankings are always, I, I think it gets, I don't want to use the word easier, but the more you see a player over four, uh, four years, you can, you can really pepper, probably peg where they, where they sit in, in terms of a, a certain section of the rankings. And, and this year, um, you know, we, we had plenty of guys as we do every year that just, exploded and moved up and part of that's maturity part of that is uh skill and and what they did throughout the year and uh you know like a, a john chanu from houston sam houston uh preseason ranking he was ranked 133 and now he's going to be ranked number 29 in the state that's 104 spots that he moved up now you have to factor in length and size and and, and everything that he can bring to the table and he also he also had a change of uh, venue. He ended up at Sam Houston this year with Coach Barreras, who who really pushed him and got a lot out of him. And and we had seen him as a young kid, but this year his senior year, uh, playing in that setting and really getting pushed and playing with some good talent around him, he really showed an upside as a six ten, long rangey, paint player who could be a rim protector, rebounder. And uh, showed he could put the ball in the hole too. So showed a really improved game, and and that's what a lot of what John brings is what the college game needs. At, at the post player, you're not really necessarily necessarily having the six ten, two hundred plus pound guy. You need a guy that uh, needs to run the floor and, and rebound and block shots. Moving forward, uh, another Houston guy that moved up quite a bit was Justin Hill from Fort Bend, Travis. He moved up 86 spots. He's going to be at number 21 uh, in the upcoming rankings. Uh, you got to like everything about him, including that he goes to Fort Ben Travis and, and is coached by uh, uh, Craig Br- uh, Bronson. That uh, is a really good basketball program in general. Um, third on our list of movers was Jaden Wells from uh, Hearst LD Bell. Uh, he moved up 85 spots. Really good score, skilled does a lot of things on the basketball court to help his team win. Uh, I think one of the biggest names that probably had the most buzz late during the year was Jordan Ivy Curry of Lamarck. And uh, he put up a lot of points in a short period of time, having over multiple games over 40, you know, pushing the 50 mark. Uh, just a long athlete that's going to the right place in UTSA because UTSA has the Javon Jackson uh, has the um, uh, ability to put up points uh, as Javon Jackson does at, at UTSA. So I think he's going to be given opportunities there. Um, you know, Will Karsten from San Antonio Reagan. He was a he was once committed to uh, to Tulane for baseball, but comes from a basketball family. Wants to play basketball, and he averaged like 17 points and 12 rebounds a game. And and driving down to San Antonio to watch him. You know, he, he's deserving of his, his 90th, 90th ranking moving up from 155, which was a plus 65 uh, in, in his movement. Uh, and a little bit of a sleeper even at that uh, at, at that ranking, 
that uh, he brings a lot to the to the game. I mean, now we get to Anthony Scott. Um, Anthony Scott's just a jitterbug. The kid is is so creative and helps his team win. Gets into the paint, constantly causing pressure on the defense. Uh, at Waco Midway, I mean, he went out and uh, helped him upset Allen in the playoffs this year. Uh, I don't think most of us saw that coming. I don't think many of us saw that coming. And so when that score got reported, we were all shocked. But he was a big part of that. And he's, uh, he's a kid who really sparks a team with his leadership and his just constant energy. Another kid I was going to throw out, and I don't know what his ranking jumped was, was uh, Brandon Monroe, kid at Arlington Seguin. Strong, athletic, shooter, wing, averaged about 18 points a game. Kid, quite frankly, weren't real familiar with going into the season, knew his name, but there was a kid who really played well this year and moved into our final rankings from uh, a little bit of an unknown going into his senior year. He, he's one of uh, about four or five kids that were unranked. Um, and, uh, you know, he jumped into the, he jumped into the, uh, the top 100. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to, uh, uh, Tayden Connorway, who was, uh, moved up 52 spots and Sam gives some background. That was, that was a athletic kid from, uh, Burleson Centennial. Saw him first, uh, weekend of the year. Kid who went out and, uh, just impressed with everything he does defensively, quick hands, uh, gets to the rim, hits some shots. At the end of the day, he was one of those kids who had rebounds, assists, just filled up the stat sheet with uh, all his energy and athleticism. Uh, had him, like you said, at 90, moved all the way up to 38, led Burleson Centennial to a late playoff run uh, where they lost to Timberview in the regionals. Uh, just to kind of wrap up the, the top 10 of the of the uh, the biggest movers, we have uh, Ramondo Battle from Prosper, who uh, really showed some development and to kind of maybe push to be more of a wing player uh, with his six seven frame and and he uh, he moved up forty nine spots. Devin Hancock uh, moved up forty four. Devin Hancock from Mesquite Horn, the number twenty two ranked player in the state. I think that was their and they won district. Wasn't that their first, their first district, district first district championship? And he was a big part of that and had a great season. Really good shooter, strong ability to put on the floor. And then finally, I mean, I I don't think there's any question of how much I've liked Jordan Wood throughout the year, uh, moving up uh, 39 spots from 62 to 23. Uh, Jordan Wood kind of just he looks every bit of a of a player that that's at the higher levels skilled and uh, does a lot of things to help his team win at his size. Transitioning into the the top 10 where we are exclusively releasing them on the podcast, um, we're going to go from 10 all the way down to one. Um, We're very excited to release these rankings. Um, Sam, I'm going to pass it to you. Number 10. 10, Jahari Long, a Seton Hall bound kid from Houston Episcopal excellent passer i think that's probably the highlight of his game is how he gets everybody involved really crafty on that uh number nine big eddie lampkin out of uh, katie morton ranch uh, big body great hands great feet really good passer for a size tcu bound number eight jamal shed really athletic explosive guard from manor uh U- university of houston cougar bound Led his team to the state tournament as a junior. Got injured during the season as a senior. Didn't make it all the way back to the state Final Four, but had a heck of a year as well. Uh, Number seven, Jacoby Coles. Big boy out of Denton Geyer. Kid just does it all. Rebounds, passes off the high post, hits a mid-range shot, steps out to the three. Great body. Uh, He's headed to Butler. Number six, Jalen Posey from Grand Prairie High. Going to SFA, great steal for SFA. They have to be excited about that one. Uh, just a do-it-all guard, athletic at 6'3", making plays all over the court. Now for our top five, um, we're going to kind of give each player a little individual breakdown. So let's get it started. Number five. Number five was uh, Mike Miles from Lancaster going uh, to TCU. TCU getting two top ten. Uh, players and Mike Miles is a player that came out and developed himself into a point guard, somebody that could distribute, not just score. I think early on in his career, he looked at him as a as a two two guard running the lane. 
one thing about Lancaster and one thing that you can say, uh, the tools that Mike Miles has, he plays hard, he plays fast, and he can score. Uh, I think a big part of his game, too, is his body. His body translates to the college game quickly. He is so physical and strong and not scared to take that contact. So some kids need that adjustment as far as the size and strength. Coming from Lancaster, the games he's experienced, his body, he's ready to go, ready to step in and help TCU. Number four, Traymond Mark uh, from Dickinson. Um, it's kind of one of those stories that you wish you could have seen it play out, uh, but you know we had to uh, uh, postpone the the Final Four and, and, and UIL, and so Traymond was a tremendous score and. That that those that wingspan and everything that he brought to the table was really made him elite at at, at the number four uh, spot spot in the rankings. The most the most natural score probably in this class can score from every level in every way with ease. Uh, just a beautiful soft shot with his length can shoot over people. A state tournament with him and maybe Duncanville matching up when, in the state championship would have been uh, a game to watch and really exciting for the fans. Number three. L.J. Cryer from Katie Morton Ranch, uh, soft touch. I mean, this guy can go anywhere on the court and get himself a shot. And no matter if he shot the ball from 15 feet away or from 23 feet away from the basket, that shot looked perfect every single time. You just felt like it was going to go in, and he was skilled, kind of a combo playmaking guard that that put up over 3,000 points for his career. And – and though he would score 30, 35 points, it didn't feel like he forced a lot. It didn't feel like he was taking bad shots. He still got teammates involved. He is headed to the Baylor Bears. Uh, you're talking about a team that was a top five program this year. And you bring in the best point guard in the state. It's also our second kid from Cor- Katie Morton Ranch in the top ten. But uh, LJ can bring something to, uh, to take on uh, some leadership role at that Baylor team. Number two, Micah Peavy from Duncanville, um, reigning state champs. He's going to go out to uh, Texas Tech and be part of that uh, uh, that Red Raider uh, team. You know, right away he provides athleticism. He's a freak athlete. So many times when you watch him play, he goes and makes a play that you don't even see coming from the weak side. Uh, he has developed himself also a little bit of a mid-range game that where he adds that athleticism to be able to bounce off the floor and elevate and, and score over opponents. He, he's so quick to the ball and quick off the floor that he gets junk. He gets trash, uh, slash, into, slash into the rim to grab a rebound, and then he's so quick to get back to the rim. When he does put it on the floor, he's, he's so quick to get off the floor that the defense doesn't have time to get up and block his shot. Um, it's just a lot of bounce and energy to his game. He's a really hard worker, working on developing his game. I know he's one of those kids that's at the gym every day at 6, 6.30, back when we could go to the gym every morning. But he's the kind of kid who's going to put in the time and get better and better with time. Number one, Greg Brown. Greg Brown out of uh, Leander Vandegrift High School. Uh, still hasn't made a college decision. A lot of uh, Texas Longhorns hope and believe that's where he's going to be and stay close to home. But I know he's got a lot of people coming after him. This is a kid that's just in 25 years of watching high school basketball and doing this job, ranks up there as the elite of the elite in athleticism. Uh, just an incredible open court finisher, high flyer, can step out and hit the three. Uh, maybe at times relies on that and wants to do that too much. But when he attacks and gets close to the rim, it's an amazing highlight reel to watch. And, and he was the total package when you when you wrap up season and season that starts with the high school season or summer season, spring to summer to fall, he's the complete player. And you could see him at high levels when he was playing with the uh, on the EYBL circuit. He's a McDonald's All American, and that was the consistency which he brought at a very high level. Was was uh, to see it in person. You know, you'll you'll look back and and really know that you were watching one of the best athletes in in the state of Texas over the past twenty five years. 
That wraps up our 2020 rankings show. If you would, give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram, at Texas Hoops Gasso, or visit us on our website, texashoops.rivals.com and greatamericanshootout.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Great American Shootout podcast. For more Texas high school basketball, visit us at texashoops.rivals.com and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Texas Hoops Gasso. We'll see you next time.